Okay. So we're over here at the finishing desk. This stuff has just come off of the clear coat rack. Um, a lot of this is going to get shipped out today, and I promise you I have more to do than I do to show today, so we're going to try and just kind of rip through this real quick. You know, I always say that, and then I always get caught up or hung up on a pattern because I like it so much. Um, it's Saturday morning, you guys. I'm uh, half asleep, and it's pouring buckets of rain outside, um, and I'm playing with some new gear. So this is the new iPhone 8. I picked this up because my last one got inundated with water because I'm always on the water. Now I do use life proof, but um, you have to keep that sealed. So if you have anything open like your headphone jack spot or where you plug in to charge, it's kind of on you if your phone gets flooded. And unfortunately, uh, well, plus I was always running out of storage, so it is what it is. So we're going to start with these guys today. Um, these are dingers. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, these are Dinger M65s, D65s, they're D65s. So the Dinger pressing of this mold is a D65 because they're Dinger. It is based on the Duo, which is a, an extremely close replica, the M65, and it's the closest that we could find in real life for a customer to the Cyclone. Now there's probably some that are out there and I do, when I'm working with high-end baits, I would prefer for the customer to send me the bait that they want me to repaint. Um, but a lot of folks don't want to spend the $22 for the, for the Mega Bass that this is based on. This is off the Cyclone. And this is a Cyclone color. So this is the Mega Bass color. It's in my crawl pattern, but the color matching's pretty much spot on. It's got that reddish brown sienna on the belly with the crawl. It's got some brown on the top of the head. It's got lots of pearlescent paint on it. And uh, I like the pearlescence in it. I, I usually shoot with that when I'm doing depth because these were meant to get into the 12 to 14 foot range. <laughs> The, a little bit shallower with lighter line, but they will troll pretty deep for you. And then this is my take on the pattern. This is a little bit different, just a plain brown belly. Doesn't have the uh, the dark eyes. And I, I custom did those. And the blue black. Also a good reflective bit of pearlescence in it. Just a super profile bait for that water column depth. Moving on. This is a spook for a customer that's going to be um, doing some night fishing. So I did a couple of things for him. It's got the UV black light underlay on it. So that's going to really show up. Fish can key in on that. Also has the now spooks. You really don't put 3D eyes on that. I've seen some people do it. It just kind of makes it swim wrong, and there's just a lot of stuff that that I wouldn't do with 3D eyes. But I, I have seen it done, so if that's your thing. My apologies, no disrespect. These are glow in the dark 2D eyes. And one little tip that I'll give you guys: if you're going to be working with this, and obviously this is curved. So these eyes, they're flat and they're flexible, but they have a tendency to like kind of stick up and you notice that they are not sticking up on this. That's because we used a couple little drops of Loctite underneath the eyes and then I held those in place until it dried. Um, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds of your time. It's totally worth it because you're going to get a better seal on those eyes. And that's also going to keep the bait swimming right too, because if you have any kind of water distortion, these baits were designed to, to walk a certain way. They're top water, obviously. Um, if you didn't know they're top water, they are. Now they've got a good knock in them. So the fish is going to be able to hear it, but you also want it to walk properly. And if you've got any kind of mess on the front, like the eyes are out of place or anything like, like that, then um, it's just not going to swim right. So take the time, do it right. Purple zombie. This is going up to Virginia in that Predator S, which is actually, it's not Predator. It's, uh, you can get it from, uh, I think Predator gets it from overseas and then just charges a lot more for it because it's in the States and you don't have to wait for a couple of weeks for it to ship. So convenience versus waiting. Um, but this is just the basic S-crank. 
it's a little bit less expensive for, for my customers than the Dinger version, which you really cannot tell the difference on the Dinger version. That's normally what I'm painting with on the S-Cranks. Um, it's got that little fin that comes down and you've got a line that goes through. The lateral line is much more prominent. But this is, this is a great summer bait. This will dig down to about five feet, so it'll bounce off rocks and stuff like that. Um, but it's also a good search bait. One of my favorites, these S-Crank styles. Now this is not a knockoff. Let me take this over here to the light. You guys can see that this is a Rogue. It's a Smithwick Rogue. And if you were from Ireland, then you'd want me to say Schmidtick. But this is a suspending. This is also going to be used for night. You can see it's got a little glitter in it. That's in the underlay. And we've got some blue purple in that underlay. Should be pretty effective. And I'm still learning the capabilities of my autofocus. Obviously, I'm not there yet. Sorry about that, folks. Now, I kind of gave a little bit of a our preview yesterday. I'm gonna okay. So, so I've got two different lights here. This one is above me. is just a, a regular old fluorescent. This is the LED sunshine imitation. So the the truer colors that you're gonna get off this bait is gonna come from this light over here, which is why you'll have a tendency to see me bring baits to this side more often than not. It's also where I shoot for any kind of website display. This is the Toxic Cicada, new wake series. Actually, I've had the Toxic line out for a bit, but just fun, fun, fun. Fluorescent, you can see that it glows when you pull it back. That's what it's supposed to do. This is great at dusk, twilight. When you're first starting out in the morning, I'd throw this. When you're finishing up in the evening, as the sun's going down, I'd throw this. Um, fun, fun pattern and it's exclusive so if you see this particular pattern anywhere else it is an imitation not an original so very cool japanese beetles also on some foiled you can see that shine underneath it's on a foiled bait this is a briar creek yes i've got paint on my hands imagine that Very simple, effective. Red, you'd normally find this um, used more spring, late winter, but in stained water, because it goes down to a yellow orange on the bottom. Stained water, this is a good search tool. And let's see, what else do we have? That's pretty much it for today. Some more darts. Love doing these darter patterns. Let's see if we can get that. Yeah, that's on that shine. This is that Flash 08, which is basically like a, a Rapala blank, Rapala style blank. And there you go. That's what we got for you today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Got lots to do. I will catch up with you guys on the early side of the week. I've got a couple of um, spray sessions to do this weekend. I think we're going to do a stencil one. So it's just going to be a, a materials and stenciling and how to test what kind of pattern you want before you actually, and, and learning how to stencil, learning how to put the paint on properly. So I'm going to probably be working more with, um, with scrap paper than I am on the actual baits itself. So it's going to be at the beginner's level, but hopefully that should be uploaded by Tuesday. So stick around for that. Have a great weekend. Happy casting, and we'll see you on the water.